everyone, this is Nick. Welcome back. In part two of this animation video series, we're going to animate this sort of background um, filled with clouds here. So the first thing I want to do is add an animation player here for an animation player. And we'll call this, let's just say, big clouds. Now I might be able to use this animation player for all of the clouds, but I'm just gonna call it that just in case I wanna add another animation player. But in this animation player, I'm gonna add a new animation and just call it big clouds. And I think I want that to be, let's say seven seconds. You can always go back in and change the timing of your animation if you don't like it. So I'm just guessing in the beginning but I'm just gonna animate the position of each of these sort of big clouds at the bottom here. So I'm gonna add a property track to background clouds one and two. And we'll start with number one, click okay. And then I want the position. Great. So very first thing I wanna do is add a keyframe for this start position. So over in the inspector under transform, I'm gonna click the keyframe button Is that the wrong one? Oh, sorry, you have to be clicked on the correct node or sprite or whatever over here in your sort of scene tree. So I'm animating clouds or background clouds number one first. So I had to make sure I was actually clicked on that. But I'm gonna do the same thing and go over to transform and under transform, click on the keyframe and there we go. So I think I'm gonna to come to about halfway and then I'm gonna set a new position for these clouds, make them go up a little bit. And then I wanna keyframe that position. And that's actually all I need to do because I want this animation to be looping. So I'm gonna turn on the looping um, option here. And then I'm gonna make sure this animation starts as soon as the scene plays. So I don't have to turn it on manually or anything. So let's take a look at that. I like that. There we go. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other sort of big group of clouds. Uh, background clouds too. So add a track, property track, background clouds too, position. Make sure I've actually clicked on them this time. Keyframe the start position. And then at about halfway, I want these to go a little bit down. There we go. Keyframe that position. And that's it. So we play that from the beginning, we can see if there's a nice little offset between the two and they kind of bounce up and down. I like that. I'm going to hide my foreground clouds for now because I want to animate my background clouds first. So with the background clouds, I want these to be moving across the sky and I kind of want it to be on a loop. So that means I'm gonna duplicate this sort of group of background clouds. So I'm gonna hit Control D and automatically gives it a name, but that's my duplicate group here. And then I'm gonna move that whole group off to the side somewhere. And I want it to begin right where the first group ends, or roughly around there. There we go, that looks good. And I don't think I need another animation player. I can just use the same one here. Um, so I'm gonna add a new track, property track. And this will be for background clouds here. The group, not the individual sprite. <laughs> I think my names might be a little confusing, but I'm gonna animate background clouds here. Click OK, and we're gonna animate the position again. So make sure I'm actually clicked on the group and I want to keyframe the start position. So under transform, I want the position, keyframe that. Uh, so this is also going to loop, but I want these to move all the way across the screen by the time the animation ends. So I'm going to hold shift and drag these all the way off the screen. There we go. And then keyframe that position. Let's see how fast they go. Yeah, so those are moving a little bit faster. That looks fine though. So. That's the first group. So to get the looping effect, I wanna move the second group into the start position of the first group. So if I click 
click on background clouds three, which is that second group I created over here. Uh, we're going to animate that now. So I'm going to click add track property track background clouds three position. Open that up. Keyframe the start position under transform keyframe. And now I want to know the X value along the X axis because the Y value should be the same. They're just moving from right to left along the X. I want to know the X value of that first group. So I'm going to click on background clouds at its start position. The X is zero. That's pretty easy. Great. So I'm going to animate background clouds under three to zero. So come over here, hit zero. And there you go. It fills the position that the first group used to be in. Keyframe that. And that should be it. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. We should get a nice sort of looping effect because at the end of the animation, it'll snap back to its original position. There we go. So now it looks like we have some infinitely scrolling crop clouds. Um, so I'm going to turn on my foreground clouds so we can see what that looks like. We have these sort of bouncing big clouds. We got our further away clouds moving pretty quick. And then I think I'm going to keep these foreground clouds stationary. And the rocket is actually going to go behind these foreground clouds. All right, so I think that looks all right. So let's move on to animating the planet. OK, so if you've seen my previous video on how to animate a sort of infinitely rotating planet using the Kurzgesagt style, I'm actually going to do this planet a little bit differently. Thanks to a comment I received on that video, uh, I found out about another method of getting that loop to occur. So we're going to try that out. So I still set it up the same way, have my light 2D, which is going to be used as the mask. But uh, I'm going to turn off my clouds and turn off my atmosphere so we can take a look at the land itself. So for the planet land, I'm going to go over to the region settings in the inspector and turn on the texture region. And you can see it disappears under the texture region menu at the bottom here. You want to open that up and drag out a rectangle or a square over that texture region. There we go. I think that looks OK. You can also turn on pixel snapping or grid snapping if you need to to get exactly to the edge. Um, but we'll see what this looks like. So what's going to happen is the texture is going to animate, but it's going to animate only within the bounds of that region. So. In order to make sure that, that happens, we need to click on our texture over here in our uh, sort of file system. And then under the import tab, we want to click on repeat and make sure that it's enabled and then re-import. So that's basically going to activate our texture region and make sure that the repeating uh, sort of ability is actually going to work because the repeating ability is what makes it look like it's scrolling past. So what we're actually going to animate is the X position of the region rect. So if I change this value here, you can see that even though it's sort of moved to a different position, it's sort of looping back on the other side. What we're going to do is animate the full width of that sprite. So you want to actually know the full width of that sprite. Um, so the width of this land sprite is 1,123 pixels. So as long as I remember that, that's what we're going to animate. So I'm going to add my animation player to the scene. Add a new animation. We'll just call it loop. And maybe this will take, let's move sort of slow, we'll say 10 seconds. I'm going to add a track for the land. And as I mentioned, we're going to animate the X value of the region. So you want region rect and click open. So we're going to keyframe the start position. And then at the very end, we want our land to have moved completely off the screen and looped itself back around with the full width of that sprite, which as we recall is 1,123 pixels. 
So that's the X value I want to animate to, and then I'll keyframe that. And you can see, as we scrub through our animation, it looks like the texture region is working and it's animating within the bounds of that region. And this way we don't have to duplicate sprites or try to animate two different things. We can just animate one thing using its width. So this is the exact same thing I'm gonna do for the planet clouds. And then after I finish animating the planet clouds, we'll turn on our light 2D and use it as a mask. So for my clouds, I animated them in the exact same way and I actually went ahead and added another animation player and added the clouds to this animation player because I want the timings to be a bit different. So it looks like the land is moving a bit slower than the clouds. And actually, I'm gonna come back to my original animation player for the land and increase that time probably to 15 because I want that land to be noticeably slower than the clouds. There we go. So I'm going to turn on that light 2D and over here in the inspector for that light, I'm gonna set the mode to mix. And then for everything that I want to be masked, I'm gonna go in uh, to the inspector down to material and add a new material, new canvas item material, click open those options. And for the light mode, set it to light only. And you can already see it clips to the region of the light. So I'm gonna do that for the clouds as well. Go to material, new canvas item material, light mode, light only. And there we go. So I'm gonna turn on my atmosphere and we have our rotating planet. All right, so that completes the planet. So we have our planet animated and we have our sort of main scene and clouds animated at this point. As a reminder, you can download all of the assets for this animation from my GitHub and the link is in the description of this video. Hope you're all doing well and hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.